I'm eager to have this conversation uh, to, to kick off our afternoon uh, with Mark Van Name, who's the president of Principled Technologies. Uh, thank you for supporting the symposium, helping us uh, to make this happen and be together for three days. And I'm eager to learn a little bit about Principled Technologies. So maybe you can tell us first off a little bit about what Principled Technologies does. Absolutely, and first, thank you for having us and thanks everybody for coming this afternoon. Uh, PT is a company that's been around about 17 years and we specialize in building uh, learning content and marketing content, but we're here today talking about learning content that provides effective business outcomes. And um, our big focus is on working with learners to get their attention and reward it and empower them to do what they need to do. So, Mark, we, you and I obviously have had a chance to talk a few times before we jumped up here on stage, and I know you've got some opinions about things. So let's, let's dive a little bit into those opinions. And the first thing I want to start with is, is asking you a little bit about um, what you believe is a bit of a, what we're at a threshold moment for many of, of our organizations. And, and maybe you could start with explaining to us a little bit about what that means. Yeah, absolutely, thanks. Uh, we live today in an attention economy, and we don't have a choice about it. Everything that everybody creates, every piece of content, is constantly available. We all have, like I have here, we all have a gateway to everything, a gateway to infinite distraction. It's also our tablets, our laptops, our desktops, our TVs. And whenever we touch any access to the internet, we have a choice. Are we gonna do the thing that we're theoretically supposed to do? Are we gonna do the, take the course that we're supposed to take? Are we gonna text home? Are we gonna play Pokemon Go? Are we going to look up the recipes for tonight's dinner? Are we going to buy some movie tickets? Are we going to answer email? What are we going to do? The list is endless. It's an endless world of distraction. And all of the content in it is competing. And, and the real threshold that we're at right now is that as a learning industry, we've come from a heritage and from a culture in companies where we could tell people to take our courses and have some reasonable expectation that a significant number would. And those days are basically gone or going fast. You can't do that anymore. You have to earn it. You have to compete with all that other content. And so when we build courses, when we do instructor-led training, any way we train people, we have to compete with all of those other distractions. We don't get a choice. And the question is, are we gonna compete effectively? Are we gonna adopt the tools of competition and the technologies of it? Or are we gonna get hurt? And so our personal take is, let's not get hurt. Let's embrace and play the content game well. Yeah. So one of the interesting things that, uh, that I learned about you as we were preparing is you're a science fiction author. You've I written am. some science fiction books. I have, yeah. Did you, could you have imagined this future that we now live in that you just described as a, as a science fiction writer 10, 20 years ago? Absolutely, I failed. <laughs> uh, so science fiction writers uh, like to pretend they're good at guessing. They're actually terrible at guessing. You can point to specific examples like Arthur C. Clarke in 1947, I think it was, foreseeing communication satellites, but mostly we're terrible at it. We, because we're writing now, and so what you can really see is our version of now cast in the future. So my, I have five novels out. They're all uh, about 500 years in the future, and they really are about the issues of today. Yeah. Right. All right, so let's come back to the initial question, um, which is, okay, we're living at this threshold moment. Attention economy, we're, we're, as learning and development organizations, we're, just, we're, we're competing with everybody at all times. What does that mean for how we approach our learning and development? What, how do we, what do we need to consider doing differently from your point of view? Well, I think a lot of what we need to, to do, we're already on the path to. Um, as much as I, as a novelist, hate it, microlearning is absolutely here to stay. And it doesn't mean we can't teach deep, complex topics, but it means we have to chunk it up. We have to understand that our audiences are going to give us small chunks of their attention most of the time and not large chunks of their attention. But we also have to embrace all of the technologies that go into great content. So if you think about the things you love in content, whether it's movies, TVs, um, just YouTube videos, happy cat time, there's a set of technologies there. There's a lot of the websites are using what are called persuasion technologies that we in learning, and th this is a, a real thing. You can read about it online, Facebook, Google, all of these companies use persuasion technologies. We have to think about that for learning. 
not in a creepy way because it can get kind of creepy, but we do have to think about that. We have to think about video technologies. We have to be good at video. We have to embrace design technologies, not just the instructional design of our heritage, which is no less important than ever. That's absolutely vital, but also graphic design technologies. We have to embrace writing as a discipline. We have to write to get and reward attention. Each of these different areas, and, and development, software. When we talk e-learning, and that's what we specialize in, we're in the software business. We may not want to be in the software business. We may think, well, we're just using Storyline. We're using Captivate. So not really hardcore programming. We're delivering software. It has an interface. It has bugs. It has good features, bad features. It's interesting. It's not interesting. It's well designed. It's not well designed. So software technologies. We talk about agile and nimble in learning, and they're the last five, seven year things. Agile and nimble in software development are 15 and 20 years old. We can learn from the technologies we use. We can learn how to build good videos, learn how to tell stories. And storytelling is its own kind of technologies. And we have to tell stories to be relatable. We have to speak to people the way they want to be spoken to. When you go and see the new Avengers movie coming up, or if you're like me and you're a total geek, you're absolutely going to be there the opening night, I'm going to see storytelling technologies at work on me. They're going to manipulate me in lots of ways. We need to embrace those. We need to think about all of those in our learning so that the package we put together requires people from all those disciplines to do great work to compete with the other content. So where do we invest as learning organizations? Because what you just described is an, an incredible expansion. It's, it's been going on for quite a while, but it's an expansion of the scope and responsibility of it, what it is that we do. How do you make decisions about where to invest your time and energy? Where should you not invest would, from your recommendation point of view, and where should you invest more? Okay, so obviously we're going to say invest by coming to us. I, mean, I, I, I got to make that, that plug. Your marketing people would be disappointed if they, you lost I, that I would. There are people in the audience who would hit me if I didn't say that. But, but we're past that now. So what I will say is we've got to, I think, first think about the right partners and think about what our core competencies are and then make the investments carefully, either by partnering with people or by saying, we're going to become good at this, we're not going to spend our energy on that. In our case, uh, we ended up having to invest in all those areas, and we have a, a very large team of people. You know, we have a 2,000 square foot green and white screen studio in our facility. That's a, a weird thing for a learning development organization, but it allows us to shoot videos and video quality that we couldn't otherwise do. So I think a lot depends on your budget, and what your partners are, but start with the core competencies, which are your SMEs, the areas you know, and then if you're strong in instructional design, absolutely embrace that, and then find the right partners, because I, I think in today's world, almost nobody does everything. We all partner up, we all work together, and, and it doesn't matter uh, exactly how you find the partners, but you find the partners that are going to be complementary, and then if you want to become all in one, then you have to attack all of those different disciplines, and, and it's an ongoing investment thing. I mean, you don't get to just stand still because the bar is getting raised and changed all the time. So you talked a little bit about how your, um, your background is sort of at the intersection of marketing, content creation, and learning. If you're sort of looking ahead to the future, how do you see those three coming together more or, or, or differently in the future? And are there other disciplines that you see kind of becoming more and more part of the, the toolkit of the folks who are out here doing, doing learning and development work. So one of the things that I said um, to our learning people that caused them to be the angriest at me, so I, I'll say it here, is marketing is learning and learning is marketing. For commercial learning, I, I'm not uh, talking just universities, although I would argue that universities are indulging in this too. When we are training people, we are training them not just in knowledge, but in a perspective. We bring to bear thoughts about how compliance should work. Some of that perspective is legally mandated for us. Some of that perspective comes from our corporate cultures. But when we build these training courses, we are unavoidably marketing perspectives and viewpoints to people. And things work best when the marketing messages and the learning messages in any organization are in sync. So imagine, for example, that you uh, sell cars, and you attract me to, sorry, to this new minivan. It's a great minivan, and, and the thing that really gets me sold is how well it handles 
its optional suspension systems, and its safety features. So I buy the minivan. And now I want to go take some training on this minivan. If the training doesn't talk about the features that led me to buy it, if they aren't first and foremost, if I have to struggle to find them, there's this disconnect. I feel let down. And in my relationship with you as a company, I feel a little bit violated. I feel like you, did, you misled me. And, and that is the other key part of this. We are always in the relationship business. Marketing is, has known this for a very long time. You're building a relationship with people, you have to follow through on that relationship. In learning, we know that we're in a relationship with our learners, we care about our learners, but I don't think we think enough about are we fulfilling our promises to our learners? When we lead them to a certain point, are we saying to them, and here's what we promised? And when you get five modules down the road, are you still there? Are we consistently living up to that relationship? And so. Those are the things I think we've got to focus on. And what's coming down the road is an absolute focus on, I think, two big things. First, our courses have to be everywhere, easily accessible running. It's not just mobile first. It's frequently mobile only. But everything has to be where I am the way I want it. That's how I get all my content. I get it wherever I am, however I want it. We can't ignore that. We've got to do it. And, and that is a big challenge because the, the different form factors are, are not always as rewarding. And then the second thing is we've got to repay. Our trio of big words is that we, we focus on relentlessly is earn attention, reward attention with good material, earn it with great material, reward, you know, great looks, easy ways in, good interfaces, reward with great material, and empower. We have to empower the learner to take the actions that we're hoping they take, whether that is to buy a product or to be able to be compliant or to fill out their expense report. And those pressures are only going to get greater. Yeah. All right, so last question for you. I think we've talked about some of the ideas that you have around learning and development and where the, the, the possibilities and responsibilities are when, we come, when it comes to the attention economy, using persuasion techniques, thinking more like a marketer, um, really thinking of ourselves techno as technologists, whether we, we are or not in the technology business. Um, is there something that you believe that employee develop, about employee development that uh, others might find surprising, whether that's about the future or about the past or the way we do it? What is something that people might find surprising about your belief? So he's given me a softball because we've talked about it a little bit. One of the things at PT we believe in is um, creating the space for people to be themselves. So we don't have any titles. We have about 100 people. We don't have an org chart. We don't have any titles. Tracy, who's in the audience and who gave a session yesterday and we'll be giving one tomorrow, I encourage you to go. Sorry, that's a brief plug. Um, when, when people come to visit, they're like, what's Tracy's title? And I say, well, it's Tracy. Because Tracy is an instructional designer. She's a master's in instructional design. She's a superb designer. But she's become a software interface expert, too. She helps out on some of our sales calls. She gets involved in helping maintain our culture. Everybody in our company, if you go and look at them, they do multiple things. Because if you put a box around people, people tend to say, OK, well, this is my box. This is what I can do. But people are so much more than a box. People are so much more than one skill set. And I can go person by person through our whole company, and nobody does just one thing. Everybody is themselves, and that's their job title. And yes, we have to work together. Yes, there has to be orchestration. Um, you have to get business done. You've got to hit deadlines. But you find an amazing treasure trove of talent and skills in people when you let them be them and encourage them to pursue the different areas they're interested in. Yeah. And that is something we have to do with learners, and it is something that I think we have to do in our organizations. Yeah. 